The lesson outcome for this video is, I can solve radical equations with radicals on both sides. Okay, so we've solved radical equations already, but we've never seen it where we have a radical on one side and a radical on the other. So how do we start a problem that looks like this? Well, we square both sides. Because think about it, we have to undo these roots, right? And these square roots can be undone by squaring. So I'm going to square both sides, and when I do so, the square root cancels out with the square, and the square root cancels out with the square. Now we're left with, on the right, uh, left hand side, 3x minus 17, and on the right hand side we have x plus 21. Now we're just left with a good old linear equation right here, but it has been a while since we've seen variables on both sides. So we have a 3x on one side, and we have an x, which is a 1x on the right hand side, Hopefully you remember how to solve for x. Well first we have to make sure we get all the variable x terms on the same side of the equation. So we're going to start doing that by subtracting this 1x from this side of the equation as long as we subtract it from the other side. So here 3x minus, remember what this is, is 1x, so 3x minus 1x is 2x minus 17 equals x minus x cancels out and equals 21. At this point, we need to undo this 17. We're trying to solve for x. We have to undo this 17 here. We're going to add 17 to this side of the equal sign and add 17 to this side. So we get 2x and the 17 and negative 17 cancel equals 38. And last but not least, to solve for x, we're going to divide both sides by 2 and we get x equals 19. Now, just like before when working with radical equations, we can't just circle this answer and say that that is it. We need to first check to make sure it works. Because if we put 19 in here or in here and we get a negative under the root, well, it's not going to work. So let's check and see how this looks. We're going to take our original equation and put 19 in for x. And we want to know if it's equal because this will help us check our work, but we also want to make sure that there are no negatives under the roots. All right, so 3 times 19 is 57 minus 17 here. Over here we've got the square root of 40. And 57 minus 17 is in fact 40. So we have the square root of 40 equals the square root of 40. And it doesn't even matter if we find out what those values are as decimals or approximations. 40, square root of 40 does equal square root of 40. Notice there's no negatives under our square roots, so we're good to go. x equals 19. Okay, so let's just take a look at one more example of this process. So we have the square root of 2x plus 10 equals the square root of x plus 3. Again, the first step is we're going to square both sides. And we cancel the square root and the square out in both cases there. And we have 2x plus 10 equals x plus 3. At this point, we need to get all the x terms on the same side. So we are going to subtract this x here from both sides. 2x minus 1x is 1x, or just x, plus 10 equals 3. And lastly, we're going to subtract 10 from both sides of the equal sign. And we get x equals negative 7. All right, so now we're going to go in uh, to our original equation, and we're going to put the negative 7 in for x in both equations. Let's see here, we got negative 7 plus 3. All right, so does is this equal, and are there any negatives under the square root? So first of all, we have 2 times negative 7, which is negative 14, plus 10, so we have negative 14 plus 10, and you might be seeing an issue here already, I hope you are. And on this side we have negative 7 plus 3, which is negative 4. And right away, right there, we know that this is not going to be a solution. Okay, it'll be an extraneous solution. If we did want to continue simplifying, we could because I want to show you something here. 
negative 14 plus 10 is negative 4. So does negative 14 equal negative, I'm sorry, negative 4 equal negative 4? Yes, it does. But it still is an extraneous solution because it creates um, a, an apparent solution that does not work in the original equation because when you put the value of x in, it gives you a negative under the root, which is not a real number. So x equals negative 7 doesn't work. It is an extraneous solution. Okay, so my apologies. I know I said on the previous screen that I thought that that would be the last example. But I wanted to show you one more example that has something a little different that happens here. As you can see, we have a radical situation here, 2x minus 15 under the radical, minus another radical equals 0. So this one's a little bit different, but when we have two radicals, we need to get one of them on the other side of the equal sign. So the step that we need to add into this type of example is we need to add the square root of x minus 7 to both sides of the equal sign. All right, when we do that, we're going to get back to the same type of equation we had in the previous two examples. So we still have the square root of 2x minus 15. These cancel out and it's equal to 0 plus the square root of x minus 7, which is the square root of x minus 7. Now we are ready to square both sides. The square root and the square cancel. We're left with 2x minus 15 equals x minus 7. And now we're ready to solve. I'm going to subtract x from both sides, and once again I get 1x. This is not always the case, but it has been on these examples. We're going to add 15 to both sides. And x equals 8. Again, before I circle that, I want to make sure that it works in the original problem. So 2 times 8 minus 15 minus the square root of 8 minus 7. And does that equal 0? Okay, we'll simplify. This will be the square root of 2 times 8 is 16 minus 15 minus the square root of 8 minus 7. Again, does that equal 0? Well, 16 minus 15 is 1 minus 8 minus 7 is 1. Does that equal 0? Well, sure. Square root of 1 minus square root of 1 is 1 minus 1, which does in fact equal 0. So it checks out x equals 8 is our solution.